In the last video, I went ahead and created this form that I have here to work with and I actually submitted it, my name, and you basically saw it refresh. In this lesson, I want to talk about how to get those values and do something with them. So here I am in my PHP code. And what I'm going to use is, um, in PHP, there's going to be some auto global variables or global arrays that are going to be part of the language itself. One of those is going to be what's going to be called the dollar sign underscore post. And so dollar sign, and then we're going to use the underscore and then post. This particular uh, object is going to be an array that's going to collect anything that was sent to it by method of post, which we're using the method post. And so it's an array, which means every one of these objects that we have that we sent in here is going to be all stored within this variable. And what we'll need to do is we'll need to tell it which sp specific object or element that I want to actually work with. And so if I did underscore post, and it's kind of like an array, we can use the square brackets here. And inside of here, what I'll need to do is tell it which one. And most typical syntax for this one is going to be the single brick or single quote for this one here. So I'm going to do f name and end that with a single quote. And you can see that we've got that there. So this is the variable that I want to work with, or the element of the array that I want to work with, to be more specific. And so if I go ahead and type in echo this echo dollar sign under dollar sign underscore post, and then the f name element of that, I can go ahead and echo out that name. If I hit save here and refresh over here, go ahead and hit retry, you'll see my name appears here. And the reason for that is because even though I sent that a long time ago and I've saved it and refreshed it, what ends up happening is when we send this information, it actually stores it in memory until we use it. And there it is, F name. So it'll keep it in memory until we close this page out and then open up another page. And so just to make sure that it changes, let's go ahead and change it to a different name. Let's go ahead and type in Hugo. And I hit go. You'll see that when I hit go, it refreshed the page. And then F name has now been replaced with, with whatever was in this particular form here. And it was echoed out in my code here. So this is kind of how to retrieve. This is basically how we we're going to retrieve our information. So I could go through again and type in echo dollar sign underscore post. And the post does not have to be in capital letters. I just like to use that one for that particular uh, variable. And we'll go ahead and do L name now. That's the name of my last name text box. And then we'll go ahead and end that with a semicolon. And then let's go ahead and echo out as well. Dollar sign underscore post. And we're going to go ahead and do in this one, we'll do the about text area. And I'll end that with a semicolon and then echo out. That's actually all I have. So let's go ahead and hit save. And I hit refresh. Retry. And you'll see, oh, I've got an error here. Let's see where my error is. There it is. I used a plus symbol instead of the underscore. There we go. Save it. Refresh. Retry. And you'll see Hugo's there. That's because the last time I submitted it, the L name and the text area both had no data in there. So let's go ahead and redo this one again. So I'll type in Matthew Penning and this is about me and I'll hit go and you'll see Matthew Penning this is about me is all listed here in the information and of course we could echo out some break tags in there as well to separate the information. In fact I'll just do that for this particular one. Echo a break tag and then end up with a semicolon and I'll do the same thing between this one. There we go. So I'll save it, refresh it, retry, and you'll see that it separated those three values there from my post information. And now if I actually close the page, the browser itself, and reopen it, let's go ahead and reopen it because now it's not going to actually be stored there in the memory. So let's go ahead, I'm going to type in localhost here, and then I'm going to go ahead and click on my lessons folder that I created for the series and there's page one.php. Now you'll see what happens here. What happens is the fact that if it's going to open from the first point, it's going to tell me that I've got a problem because on line six, this post array element that I have is not there. It doesn't exist. Neither of any of these three exist. And the reason being that why they don't exist is because the submit button has not been pressed and the data that's from this form has not been processed through the PHP engine. So it looks at this and says there is no such thing as F name, L name, or about until I hit the go button. And in fact, if I hit the go button now, 
you'll see that I didn't submit anything in my form, but the errors went away. That's because there is now an element within this array called fname, lname, and about. It just just doesn't have anything in it. So it went ahead and everything's okay because those exist. So this is working with how to retrieve the information from our form. In the next video, I'm going to show you how to make it so that we can only run this code if the submit button has been pressed.